Well, theistic evolution actually can be a number of different distinct ideas because the term evolution can have a number of distinct definitions. So if you think of uh, the most basic definition of evolution as just being change over time, there are a couple different senses in which that's true. One is the idea that, um, that organisms have, uh, the organisms we see on Earth today are different than the ones that are attested in the fossil record. So we've seen change over time in that sense. We also see small-scale variation within the limits of a genome, for example, uh, what's called microevolution. Again, another change over time. A good example of that might be the Galapagos finches, who, the beaks of which have gotten smaller and larger in response to varying weather conditions in the, in the Galapagos, or the peppered moths whose wings went dark to light and dark again, um, or light to dark and dark, whatever. They changed back and forth between light and dark. Um, or antibiotic resistance. These are well-established, observable senses in which we've seen change over time. So that's a definition of evolution. You could conjoin with theism and say, well, God causes change over time. Nobody really disputes that idea. If uh, Christians don't dispute the idea that God is causing change over time, biologists don't dispute the idea that change over time is happening, at least within limits, and has happened over time. So that's one sense of the term evolution and one, therefore, corresponding sense of the term theistic evolution. Second idea of evolution is the idea that, that change over time has been continuous and gradual and has been occurring essentially without limits so that the picture of biological history is best represented by Darwin's figure of the, the tree of life, that all the branches on the tree represent the forms of life we see today, and each one of those forms has arisen through slow, small, gradual changes going back to one simple form at the very beginning, maybe the trunk or the root of that tree. So you start with a one-celled organism, and then that morphs and change, and incremental um, ch change accumulates over time, and it eventually causes a diversification of all the disparate forms of life we see today. So that's a theory of biological history, sometimes called monophyly, or one family, of, that everything's connected by common ancestry, and that's a second sense of evolution. And many theistic evolutionists are simply people who think that God caused that continuous and gradual change and that everything is, is linked together, and that's the right picture of biological history. A third meaning of evolution corresponds to a third idea of theistic evolution, and that's probably the most contentious notion, and that's the idea that uh, the process of natural selection and random mutation and other similarly undirected natural processes have produced all that change implied by the tree of life. And so that all the forms of life we see today are the result of this, uh, this uh, purely natural mechanism called natural selection and random mutation and some others perhaps supplementing that. And that that mechanism has been sufficient to produce all the forms of life we see today, that it's therefore creative, and that it also explains uh, the appearance of design that all biologists recognize in living organisms. Richard Dawkins says that biology is the study of complicated things that give the appearance of having been designed for a purpose. And the key word for him is appearance. Things look designed, but they're not really designed because this purely naturalistic, unguided mechanism has produced that appearance or illusion. But, it's not, but that, that mechanism merely mimics the powers of a designing intelligence. It is not um, accomplishing the goals of an intelligence. It's not goal-driven or purpose-driven. So that third meaning of evolution is standard neo-Darwinian theory today. It's m almost all evolutionary biologists adhere to that idea that a purely natural process, natural selection, random mutation, and maybe some other evolutionary mechanisms have produced everything we see today. And theistic evolution embraces that mechanism as a creative process and then says in some unspecified way God is behind it or part of it or upholding it or, um, or they may say that uh, the mutation selection mechanism is, a, is God's means of creativity. So that, that would be the third meaning of evolution. Third meaning of evolution, third sense of, possible sense of theistic evolution.